this one is the Spark Maker, the smallest and least expensive printer in the group. Um, it's built size just 98 millimeters by 55 millimeters by 125 millimeters, so it's a relatively small build size. Least expensive printer, about $230 or so. So we'll see how it goes. This is right out of the box. There really aren't any accessories in the box at all. There's a power cord, the resin vat, uh, and the printer itself. So we're going to go ahead and solve the resin vat. First thing I noticed, kind of annoying, is that you use X key to install your resin vat. That'd be easy to fix, so. First thing we're going to do is level the bed. Go ahead and turn it on. On off switch is in line. And then we'll loosen these four set screws. That's free to go. Now we're going to lower. Surface here all the way down. What you do by just turning the knob. They lower it all the way down, so that's where it went, that's where it can stop. We tighten up these screws. We're going to use this, use this ball and hex key. Save a little time. Kind of tough to get through these. I don't want to tighten it too much here because the part tightening into is actually plastic. Metal versus plastic, we know who wins. There we go, just one last little. Resin does not come with any resin. Um, this is the resin I bought from Amazon. And it says LCD BG resin, which is great, except I have no idea what that is. There's no indication anywhere on their website. The only thing I could find was listings on eBay selling it. Um, when I went to slice the model for it, it didn't come with a model. I uh, downloaded the Spark Maker slicer and it didn't come with a model, so I used the Rook similar to the one that the album used. But they were uh, careful enough to tell us not to eat the resin, so they do care about our health. So we'll go ahead and pour this in there. This particular printer, I'm 
resin anymore. It uses SD rather than USB. There's no interface, obviously, so you just load your uh, model from the SD card, insert it, and supposedly, push the print. Back and wait. That's nice. I'll do what I normally do. I'll watch, see if it appears to be starting to print. And if it does, I'll let it go. I've estimated about three hours for this print, three and a half hours, I believe. So. I'll let it go, let it do its thing, and come back and check it. end up using the resin exposure settings for the tough resin, which is what I ordered. I don't know if they're changing their, their names or what, so we'll see how it works. We need to adjust one of those. I can see some UV light come outside there, so evidently it's, it's trying to print. Cover on and let it do its thing. All right, so we're back with the spark maker. Ran its first print. It was about three hours. Of course, there's no way to tell because there's no uh, LCD display or anything on this printer. It just stops when it stops and the light turns green. And we're going to open it up for the first time, see if there's a print on there or not. And there's something on there. That's always a good sign. Raise the print bed up. Definitely a little rook on there. Smaller file than what we printed on the, the Elgin Mars, obviously, but we'll pop it off, clean it up, see what it looks like. All right, so we cleaned it up there. Uh, I don't know how well you can see it with this camera. Of course, I'll post some higher resolution pictures of it. It's a pretty decent little print. Uh, Pretty good detail. The double helix inside there is intact. Um, can almost make out the, the lettering on top, but uh, not too bad. You can definitely see the effects of the slightly lower resolution screen. A uh, little bit of what you would describe as kind of pixelation in there. I don't know how well you can see it, but um, overall, I mean, it's a, it's a good little print. So we'll let that uh, post cure, and I'll get some better pictures of it. And, post those on the website.